Should you build or buy a house in the Philippines? The, somebody sent me a message this morning. I can't find your email. Because uh, I originally went into a spam folder. Then when I put it into an inbox, I've got 10 emails and I can't actually find it. Um, I would guess you sent it more than a couple of days ago. Um, please bear in mind, I get about 150 emails a day. So it does disappear quite quickly if it's not in the right place. So be aware, if you're on a yahoo.com account, so you know who you are, um, they're coming through as spam. So I'd have a look, it might even be worth setting up a separate email on a Gmail or something, um, just for sending out emails if it's getting picked up by filters. Uh, anyway, what do I recommend? It depends on your lifestyle. Now, for us, buying a empty lot, we actually own an empty lot up in the mountains. We still haven't constructed on there yet. Um, but my personal view is buying a existing house in a um, compound with its own lot is probably the best um, best way to go forward in the Philippines. Um, the reason being is one of the big problems you have during construction phases is stuff being stolen. Um, you got the theft from your neighbors, you got the theft from your builders and architects, um, and then you've got the other side of that being that people underspec things, or should we say they reduce the components and replace them with something else. A prime example of that is cement, where they will actually reduce the content of the cement in your mixes for your concrete because sand only costs like 10 20 pesos a sack where a bag of cement is a few hundred pesos so reducing your content by adding extra sand they pocket that money doesn't sound a lot but when you consider a skilled guy is probably about 500 pesos a day Two bags of cement, that's a day's wages. Um, and they do do it. Even on large-scale projects, it's happened. There's been a building collapse in Cebu before where the chief engineer had actually done that and it was <laughs> it was a tower block and it collapsed because of the poor mix. Um, they underspec the steel. Where In the Philippines, they have steel rods. Um, what they do is they'll tie the rods together and create your your posts and your main structure. Um, they will under specify, uh, they'll swap, well, basically they go for a smaller steel than they should actually be using, which you may not have any problems for years until you have something like an earthquake where you will suddenly experience why you need the correct steel. Um, now, I know some people are going to be, oh, I'm worried now because I don't know enough about the building trade. You don't need to. Um, if you go to a national bookstore, I'm, I'm, I'm actually visualizing being in this store. Um, in the one in Cebu, for example, you come in the main door with the guard on your right, go straight forward and until you're sort of like nearly hitting the wall. and you know, as you come through the main doors, you will find there is engineering books there, and they've got all the specifications relating to what steel should be, etc., etc. I always like to take a hands-on approach, but I come from the construction and maintenance industry, so I'm a bit fussy that way. But you could also go down, go down the route of getting somebody else to manage it. A um, friend, Andrew's recently gone through um, getting a engineer and an architect he wouldn't have actually needed both but the reason you have both is the architect is independent from the engineer and the engineer is independent of the architect so if anybody's doing something they shouldn't do they will point the finger at the other one and tell you about it that's why you have these people work that way um, I'm, I'm trying to avoid blabbing on, but I'll say this is why the facilities management industry is failing in the UK, is the poacher has become gamekeeper. Um, there's very few people actually monitoring what goes on. 
because things like the fire alarm panels etc used to be checked with the fire uh, <coughs> fire officer now it's like well you're responsible for it this is why you start having problems uh, this is why I like having two people that are independent because they will tell you the truth one of them will at least which is where the red flag comes from the other option is to do it yourself and like I says if you get your engineering book it will actually work out what your steel sizes are etc but also if you get an architect to design the house that isn't actually going to be involved in the construction they will spec it all for you they will tell you what the steels need to be and you could even get that verified by somebody else the other side of that being you could actually get somebody offshore if you're that paranoid about it to actually design the building with the specifications of components um, and that way you're hundred percent my personal view on it though is be very very cautious of projects when you're not there every project I strongly advise on having a hands-on approach this is why I say about the house in the lot because you've got somewhere to stay and live while the work's going on so even if you're building the first half of your house and going to knock the house that you're in down later you've got a base to do those operations then get that bit up to a livable standard then transfer over then knock the existing house down because there when you're there every day you can see everything going on you can see when parts disappear out the door you can keep an eye on the power tools you can keep an eye on everything that's going on this is one another reason I like shipping containers um, because shipping containers are an ideal source of security because they're you know pretty rock solid <coughs> um, and I I was talking to somebody about this recently about having a shipping container in a village that's prone to petty theft because everything can be locked away in a secure um, container but off on a tangent here the but the point being is you need to monitor it where people have gone wrong is they've just gone architect you deal with it or chief engineer you deal with it and the guys have gone it's Christmas because what happens, and this is the most common thing, is they run out of money because they blow it like no tomorrow. They see it as their money and not the fact that they, although the the house may be two million pesos, they're only about three hundred thousand is really theirs. Uh, the rest of its materials, etc., etc. They don't take that into account. <coughs> so they'll spend it all, then go. Hang on, we haven't got a gate. Where am I going to get a gate from? Oh, I found a second out. Splash some paint on that. Oh, hang on a minute. We need to um, to do the steels on this wall. I got enough money. What can we get for this money? Oh, the steels are four times smaller than they should be. It'll be all right. Then they won't notice it because we're going to cover it with cement anyway. That's what happens. That is the reality of it. So be aware of this because that's what you need to protect yourself against. Do you need to be an expert in construction? No, what you need to be is cautious and just keep asking questions. Analyze things as you go, because the more you analyze things, the more likely you're going to be able to protect yourself against things going wrong. I haven't had any major problems. I've had the village idiot now and again, or more than 12 of them, um, that refuse to adapt to my will of how things should be done. Um, but I remove them it's as simple as that if you can actually find some good builders in your area and they do exist um, you will have very little problems because they're professional they do it like any other construction company they will do it at a very good good quality build but the best way to analyze a builder is actually see the last projects they've done because that will actually give you an idea of the quality, but also the designs, because you might go to a house and go, oh, I like this, can you build me one the same as this one? And that just gets rid of a lot of the issues. The things I would analyse myself personally, as a Westerner, is the plumbing, the pipe work, the electrics, how they're doing it, are they putting earth, earth in, are they putting earth bonding in, are they putting the correct rating and distribution board in? Um, like here in Spain, you will find they will shove things on one circuit. The problem with that is if I've got a faulty cooker, the entire electrics in the house don't work. 
um, if I've got a faulty light everything doesn't work what should actually happen is your light should be on one circuit depending on how big the house is you might have two circuits um, for example your upstairs downstairs your things like your aircon should be on separate breakers and even better individual breakers um, because if you've got a faulty one or you want to do maintenance at least you can isolate one to work on it um, your cookers and stuff like that if they're on the electrical system should be on independent breakers then all your electrical circuits could be upstairs downstairs you know you can have one for downstairs one for upstairs so you're looking for a board with say maybe 10 10 units on there and they're not expensive they really aren't expensive but worth the investment is getting people to actually take the time to wire them properly because you got to imagine for a system like where we are now this house you got the let's try and use this as a board my board is in the hallway here if you wire everything on the same circuit you go out the board and sort of come back to it and that's it but when you wire it properly what happens is the aircon in the bedroom needs to go up to the board aircon in the sitting room needs to go back to the board all the sockets in the sitting room and downstairs need to go back to the board the lighting circuits need to go back to the board the cooker needs to go back to the board so you can see why they just go, oh, that's too much work. I'll just do one circuit and then I'm finished this afternoon. Laziness. So be aware, those are things to watch for. Um, because if it goes in wrong, it's going to be a pain to fix. Um, a prime example of that is the plumbing, where somebody mixed the plastic pipe with the metal the what they call I think they call it GI GI the metal stuff but the GI stuff only lasts five years it's it's crap really really nasty go for the plastic pipes you'll get like at least 10 15 to 25 years out of it if it's buried <coughs> and the reason plastic you have to be cautious of is UV UV um, it's got to be buried don't don't keep it on the surface it wants to be buried out of the way of the sun sun rays and it will last forever because over a period of time what happens it gets brittle with the sun so if it's underground you don't have that issue and if you've got an upstand don't worry about it too much because even if you've got like say a garden hose sort of connection you know where you want to connect to the hose and there's only a bit of pipe here later on you can dig it out cut it off and put another piece for the upstand even um, it's not going to kill you to do that um, but I hope that advice helps um, getting local construction trade that's good like it says ask around and then ask to see stuff they've done before the bad ones will not have much to show you the good ones will actually have some homes and stuff that you can actually say we built this from scratch and that's the ones you want to be looking at are they going to cost more yes <coughs> are they going to break the bank probably not because the the work could be done properly um, I was asked how much did it cost me per square meter I didn't work it out that way um, it worked out to be around half a million pesos per unit <coughs> well but now bear in mind that's everything that's right down to the TV and the bed um, all the tiling all the electrics air conditioning everything um, per one bedroom apartment um, I should have kept figures on it and I will do on our next project because we've got the three bedroom top level to do on the second compound and I'll give you some prices once we start that we're looking at that at the moment like I said we're just trying to work out what layout we're going to do uh, before we start investing in that all right thanks for watching yeah.